Do you think do you think the media and the press have been disrespectful to Unai Emery? Yeah. Because for a new manager to have done what he's done, twenty two games unbeaten in all competitions. And he's he's not just took over Arsenal, he's had to take over an institution. And he's not really I still don't think he's getting the praise he deserves. He's still there's still a lot of people kind of suggesting that there's been a you know, there's a lot of luck in there and decisions look, and <laughs> you know listen, right? Look at the way the press carry on over Pochettino getting a draw. Hi and welcome on to the All Guns Blazing podcast with my man DT. How are you doing? I'm all right. Be behave. 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 You've been behaving yourself. Brand new. Watch out for it. Hey yo, this ain't a place to be <laughs> advertising like your merch, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, but it looks alright actually. I know. Thank you. Right, but have I been behaving? I have. Although, <laughs> although people online will like to presume I have not been behaving. Because of episode one of Blood Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, but, you know what? I remember that game, man. You know what, I right? remember that game, that, that one where you come storming onto the pitch. Yeah, do you know what? Can I just say the, something, the, right? <laughs> the, the thing is with that, right? What people don't realise, yeah? That whole, you know, that game and everything was... Before we even went out to Singapore. It was so long ago in the summer. Like, a long, long time ago now. And... No, wait, listen. Now, the team we were playing, right, was actually one of my old teams. I know everyone within that team. Now, they had a couple of players. I had an argument with one of their players because I wasn't happy about a couple of things. I wish I handled the situation a little bit more differently <coughs> at the time. Um, That's and put I, it lightly. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, the one thing I want to address, right, is because obviously everyone seems this, you know, they saw the incident with me having a face-to-face -face with the manager of the other team where we went face-to-face -face with each other. He called me a prick. I called him a prick. I walked off. He walked off. And what people don't realise and what the story doesn't obviously tell is that that guy, me and him, have known each other for more than 30 years. Our parents' house is backed on to each other. We've literally known each other since nursery. That was mild for me and him. Great mates, isn't it? No, we had... <laughs> we had... There was no intention of me and him having... Actually, a... I saw you guys having a drink after the game and it, all that. You know what I mean? This like, is so... what I mean. And it's just like there However, was no intention of me and him having a drink. However, I remember saying it to you just... at the time, man, where are you going? What are you doing on the pitch? Right? I was just getting the, involved. Your son, he, he, he fouled that um, guy, went through the back of him. It was a terrible foul. And according to you, it was a fair tackle. I'm sorry, it weren't, right? The, actually, you don't even see that on the thing, but I thought that your son... And I know why he was he was just coming back off of injury. But he was a bit rusty, went through the back of that guy, and the guy obviously jumped up, was really mad. Put his hands on him. And and it, look, it is what it, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. And it's like, you know, I've spoken to the guy, I've spoken to everyone after the game. Everyone was sitting in the the bar afterwards just having a laugh and a joke about it. And it but you, you know, your and, box office, mate. You on that thing, bloody hell! Listen, Scully as well. Oh, mate. In the Blood Brothers. I yeah. mean, Scully. Scully's um, Scully's my cousin. Uh, there were some people saying that he sounds like me on it, but Scully's yeah, my just cousin. Yeah, an X-rated version of you. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. But... Yeah, but, but the thing is about the thing is about Scully um, is that you know he's. I, I saw some people saying, "Oh, he claims to be an A licensed coach. What does he know about football?" Yeah, he used to play football professionally. He played yeah. for Watford. He played for Reading. He's been around football all of his life. Uh -huh. He's he's done the coaching. He knows. You mm. know, he's good friends with lots of. You know, he's a really good friend with actually Tim mm. Sherwood because they were they were actually at Watford together, right? So, I'm but, gonna, um, do you know like, what? I'm going to message Scully <laughs> after this to see if he's got his number. Right, but um, um, he knows. But that's how football. Is football can be very brutal and play, and guys like Scully they tell it as it is. You know what it and is. And the players, as we know, in 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 doing the uh, the whole thing, is that the players really respect him mm. because they respect his opinions on thing and they respect the fact that he's a guy that he will tell it as it is. There yeah. are a couple of players that um, previous to that dropped out because they couldn't handle Scully's uh, criticism. Mm. But that's what football's like. If you had, if you had a camera in a Premier League dressing room or, uh, or a championship or League One dressing room. That's how it is. I remember I went to a game with my son 
um, MK Dons were playing Charlton. And I got a, I, I happened to have a seat right next to the dugout, yeah? Mm. And Lee Boyer. Perks, yeah? You know Lee Boyer? Yeah. No, it's a Perks because my son plays for him, yeah. So I've got a, Lee Boyer, the manager. You remember he used to play for Leeds? And it played, it didn't he have a punch up on the pitch with his own yeah, player? Yeah, yeah. David Batty, wasn't was it, it? Was it him who had the punch up? Yeah, Lee like, Bowie. Yeah, no, be... Lee Bowie and Kieran Dyer. It was them two. Yeah, yeah, he was, was always two. a very it, feisty character. Was it him or was it David Batty? I can't yeah. remember. But he's yeah, a manager. But he was, he's a manager of Charlton. He was feisty and, oh anyway. Oh my God, man. When I was there, at one time I was saying to myself, I better move my son, man. This is getting... Like every other word that come out of that guy's mouth was an expletive. The fourth official, I felt sorry for him, right? Every single thing that guy challenged, you effort, well, look at that. That's every ridiculous... Everything, every... That's our yeah. football. The reality of football is we don't see it on TV. Even when, when we see them on the touchline, sometimes the managers and that, and they're pointing and that. We just see, we don't really hear what they've got to say. They're not always saying nice things. It's quite a brutal thing. Yeah. And, it you is. know. That's the way it is. And at the end of the day, the people that are moaning. <coughs> don't run are, on the pitch, though. Are people that have either never don't, played football. Don't run before. on the pitch for one, too. No, but they're people that have never played. I, I could pick. <laughs> listen, I could get a camera. And I could go down to uh, the local parks in Luton, Hackney Marshes, anywhere at a weekend with a camera, and I guarantee I'll pick up worse. People running on a pitch? Yeah, I've seen worse than that. I've seen players like go to their car, pick up, get in their car, and drive yeah, their car on the good. pitch. Come on, that's not No, good. it ain't. It ain't. But what I'm saying is, is that at the end of the day, that was mild. It was a few choice words. That was it. Hmm. And, and no more. You sit and you laugh and you joke about I'll it I'll tell you what, though. I, I really enjoyed it. And the feedback that we've had mm. for Blood Brothers has been brilliant. Episode two, I think, is out on Tuesday. So make sure you check that out. It's, Do you it's know what brilliant. people are struggling with? Is because there's nothing this uncut and raw ever mm. been done before. Yeah. It's basically this like... This is real, man. This is real. It's like hashtag, but on steroids. <laughs> Which is... Do you know what I mean? It's like... It's the realness, man. You know what I mean? You get to see the realness and you get to see, you know, and I, I've, re I, I've really, really enjoyed episode one. I've watched it about four times. It's mm. been really, really good. Um, moving on to like football in Arsenal football. I'll tell you what, I enjoyed Blood Brothers way more than I enjoyed that game against Carabag. <laughs> Honestly, you know when they say... You know, sometimes when they say, I lost two hours of my life that I'll never get back. That's how that felt <laughs> oh. against Carabag. That was a terrible game, man. I mean, oh, there was hardly anyone there. The attendance oh, no. was could... appalling. The whole, uh, like, I'm a season ticket holder. Everybody in front of me and everybody behind me, I think I only saw two people that always come. Yeah. Every And everything was empty. So basically... If you look at the other end of the ground in the clock end, where the tickets were on general sale, that was quite full. Yeah. The lower tier. Yeah, the lower tier in the clock end. Was it's quite the season full. ticket holders who basically said, "I can't be bothered to go." Yeah. It was absolutely freezing. I was asking the question outside the game. I mean, we we went. We're diehard, you know. But can we blame fans for not going to that game? I mean, there were some fans saying, oh, you know, this, you know, they're not real fans if they don't come to... I, I don't think I can agree with that because it was a testing game. Even going to it, I weren't really... I couldn't get myself up for that game because we've already won mm. the group. Carabag have got no chance of, uh, anything. you know, anything. You don't know any of the players really on Carabag's team. There's nothing to get excited about. The only thing I was a bit excited about was to see Koscielny play, but... I couldn't get excited for the game. And then Carabag was so negative. I mean, for the whole game, they didn't have a shot. Forget shot on target. They didn't have a shot. I think there was one time they put a cross in and everyone, Ey! I mean, it, they were terrible. They just it went, came to defend. <laughs> it was, it you know, was... there was a, some good, a few good performances by some of our young players. Good goal by Lacazette. Good to see Ozil get an assist. Mm. But it was a awful game man it was uh one of those nights it was tough we got to get out of that europa league it was tough it was i'm really sorry hard. i'm but sorry you know what this is oh, your way for as well this is your way for fault and this is why i said it to you in my interview i said i think the reason why they're doing this third competition now mm. is so that they can put teams like carabag in it you know all of the teams that are never even getting out of the group stages of the europa but are in the europa every mm. year they're making it a bit more exciting for them. And yeah, I but, then, it, but, then, but then you can also look at it and say it's our fault 
for being for in that. being in that competition in the first. That's what you get. Those yeah. are the type of teams I understand in it. the early stages that you're going to come up against. But, we we never earned the right. But can I to just say, be, but, I, oh, I, I really really enjoyed my trip to Azerbaijan. Yeah, Did listen. You enjoy your trip to Azerbaijan. I didn't go to Azerbaijan. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't go to <laughs> Azerbaijan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're funny. And there was there was a very good reason why I didn't go to Azerbaijan. Yeah, because right? you was filled with right? Channel Four. Exactly, and yeah. I, you know, and and it was something. It was something that had been arranged from months uh, before did you that, go, did that you I go? couldn't get out of. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> Hold on, but you've missed games, haven't you? Because I had major surgery. Well, that's no excuse. Get out of it, man. What it's kind of excuse is that? trying to compare major surgery to... Like... Yeah, I am. I am. That's no excuse, man. It's plastic. <laughs> plastic fan, man. I oh, can't you know what believe mean? it. There's a guy who sits a couple of... Um, Rose away from me. He had major surgery. He was there the day after. You know, I mean, you're a wimp. Get out of it the you're day wimp. after. You fool. <laughs> day after. You wimp. You get out of wimp. it, man. I remember I had my surgery the day before we played Newcastle away. My God, I was lucky I even knew what time it was. You should have been anything. at the game, mate. You yeah. know what I mean? Pull it this way. Do you remember you having a go at me <laughs> when I actually came back for the Atletico game in the semi final at um, Emirates? And you were like, why are you here, man? I, don't I still remember that. had staples in my stomach and everything. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, you made very clear as <laughs> day. <laughs> so, and then but apart from that, I think, yes, yeah, that South game was terrible. In the man. snow, wasn't it? That's the other one we missed. Do you know that there's, uh, I was driving no. in my car and there's snow forecast again no, no. this week? And I'm thinking to myself, should I go to Southampton from the day before and get a hotel <laughs> or something? I do not want to end up missing that game. I mean, you know, you but the, the, but let, let's, let's just rewind back to to, mm. to the the Europa League game. Koscielny being back, mm -hmm. that's a plus. We're gonna need him. Yep. We got defensive issues. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, Socrates looked great in that game, and he's gonna be missing. Yeah. I don't think there'll be no Mustafi. No, he's, he's, he's suspended, suspended as suspended. well. Right. That's just Koscielny. Does he come back in for you now? Yeah, it has to because we don't have any other centre backs. But is he? It's all right playing, you know, 75 minutes against Karabag, but he's going to be up against like a really, you know, I, I don't know, if looking at him in the game, he looked to, looked there was a couple of times where he had his pace and quite uh, having said that, I could have looked comfortable against them. I know, you but know I mean, I, they were I, awful. No, don't, don't over exaggerate. <coughs> I, I just genuinely believe that this, we've got no other choice. And, mm. you know, if he's playing 70, 75 minutes, we, he's got to be thrown in the deep end. He has to be because we. It's got to be a back four then, hasn't it? There's no way you can... Can you go and risk... I don't think he's like, going to play... I think he's going to play three. You think so? Yeah, I think he's going to play Monreal and Licksteiner with him. I. That's what I think. I, I, I mean, I saw Emery during the week that there was a comment from him saying that he's he might be looking to go and get a centre-half yeah. in January. And I think, you know, because Rob Holding's out now. We it's don't easy. know how Koscielny... You know, let's hope... Because the thing is that the positive is, if Koscielny gets back to being anything like what we know he can yeah, be, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden we could have a decent defense. You know, if I I I still think like he's our best defender. So if it's him and Socrates, I'd be more than happy with that. Mm. If if Koscielny can get back to where, uh, that's that's the you know million dollar question because yeah, Koscielny so. hasn't been. Even before he was injured, he looked like he was fading. He looked like he'd lost a yard of pace. But is that because he'd been carrying around an Achilles injury? Maybe. Maybe. You know? We're only going to find out now. Yeah. You it's know? a big game for him to come back into because, you know, against Southampton now, they've got a new manager. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's ex-RB Leipzig. They play a high press. So that means um, he's going to be targeted. They're going to say, you know, the, the manager will be saying to... Charlie Austin, Redmond, whoever he's got playing up front, he's going to be like, right, be right on Koscielny. Mm. He's just come back. He hasn't been tested really. Be right on him. Deny him space. And our style of football now is playing out from the back. And I don't even know how Koscielny is with that yeah. because, again, we didn't really play that style under Wenger. Uh, How's Koscielny going to be with receiving the ball constantly under pressure from the back because that's how we play. And, you know the we way to know, beat up, the way to beat that high press is to play it out from the back, keep it, beat that press, and then you're in. We won't know, will we? Does it worry you? No. I, I've got all my faith. It worries in, me. I've got all my faith in Emery. <coughs> I trust my manager. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Remember that. I trust my manager. But um, 
listen, we, we've just got to go out there and just carry on the way we have been. Mm. You know, I think that Rob Holding's a bigger miss than some people realise. Oh, it's massive. Because he's, he was playing well. He's the ball carrying centre yeah. back. And he 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 in that arm, you know, when they play the ball out from the back, he's very, you know, he's he's got good ball skills and that and mm. very comfortable on the ball. Yeah. And I see Socrates trying it against Huddersfield. And it's no, you know, fault of his own, but he's just not as comfortable as Rob yeah, Holding. He's still decent, so- Yeah, I know he's decent, but yeah. Socrates is more of a I want to smash your face in type of guy. Whereas Rob Holden's a mm. kind of... Uh, you know you what, know what I mean? though? I like Socrates I, I know, brings the ball out, though. He, he brings it out. out. But what I'm saying is, I don't think he's as good mm. as Rob Holden at bringing him out. Mm. Or maybe he he's just got to adapt to it a little bit more because his style's been to just be the one that solidifies everything and Rob Holden can go and break out. Um, and that's it's why... A, it's a massive game for Koscielny. But do you know what as well? It's a big game for him. And I, <coughs> I'll tell you something. I'm... This is a big shout as well, but I, I think the young lad, Zek Medley, could be in contention. I'm really impressed with him. He looked good. I'm uh, impressed with him. It's hard to judge, man. I know it is hard to judge, and it's an almighty Karabag. gamble. It's an almighty yeah, gamble. Yeah, I don't know. But you did. I, I still think he's one player that could be knocking on the door soon. Mm, I think big lad, he's, man. He, Strong, he plays good on the left hand side of the defence, which is an area that we need strengthening. Um, he's comfortable on the ball. He's imposing. He's strong. He's powerful. Mm. Yeah, he, he's got he all good. the attributes. He looked good, but you know? this is gonna be a tough game for us. Yeah, we, it will we've be. got we've got a bad record. Very bad at St Mary's. You know what I mean? We've got a bad record. Remember that? <laughs> Who can forget that time Boxing Day uh, when we went there and got smashed to four pieces nil. four nil? Uh, and I remember we was on a great run then. Uh, and yeah, you know I mean we got. And that killed our season. Do you know I remember the, that. Do you know the only thing that I say now? Whenever we bring up the past, all I keep saying now, different manager. Last season. Different manager. 2-2. Two, two. And different, uh, we didn't really deserve... No, 1-1. One, one. Was it 1-1? One, 1-1 one? One, one. Olivier Giroud equalised about five That's minutes right, ago. That's right, yeah, yeah. Because we I was in the, snow. the bloody game, were we? Exactly. But, um, um, no, I, everything that refers to the past and, you know, places like Southampton where we've always been spineless, weak mentality... Um, all them type of things, I'm going into it not thinking like that this year because we've mm. got a new manager. And with 22 games unbeaten, no matter how anyone wants to try and mock it, 22 mm. games unbeaten, no one else has done it. If it's so easy, why has not everyone else done it? Nah, it's, listen, uh, and so, I, 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 do you, you know, I want to ask you this question. Do you, think, do you think the media and the press have been disrespectful to Unai Emery? Yeah. Because for a new manager to have done what he's done, 22 games unbeaten in all competitions. And he's he's not just took over Arsenal, he's had to take over an institution. And he's not really... I still don't think he's getting the praise he deserves. He's still... There's still a lot of people kind of suggesting that there's been a... You know, there's a lot of luck in there and decisions look, and, you know... <laughs> Listen, right? Look at the way the press carry on over Pochettino getting a draw. Yeah? If we would have drew against Barcelona on Tuesday night, whenever, whenever it was, to get through the way that Spurs did, I guarantee the headlines the next morning would have been lucky Arsenal drew against a weak Barcelona. I haven't said Barcelona. that. I haven't said that. Uh, yeah, need, did need, needed, needed an inter slip up to get through. They're carrying on like Spurs have just won the World Cup. It's like, <laughs> honestly, Harry Kane done an interview and said this result shows that we can beat anyone. What? You drew. <laughs> Who did you beat? And then he went on to say, after we conceded the first goal, we kept a clean sheet. What? That's like saying, well, after you conceded the fourth goal against Arsenal, you kept a clean sheet as well, you prick. <laughs> Seriously. And it's like, why are they hyping them so much? And that's why I'm so fired up. I know we got a concentrate on Southampton this weekend but my mind is so fired up and ready for Spurs again next week because we need to put them back under their rocks again and that's just oh, that I, just, I don't understand though why Emery I saw an, another thing now now I don't know what Merson about Torreira uh, do you know what before I no. before I started recording this tonight what I'll say is Paul Merson's tweeted out since all this has come out literally yeah. just before we've Start okay. recording, and he's tweeted the actual people that uh, the guess who it was. 
guess where the article sun oh, there's, the sun, yeah, there's it? a yeah. surprise and he's turned around and said i never said this at all okay i could because I, I even even with some of the criticism that paul merson has had mm. i was like i can't believe that it's not paul like merson, the sun though to lie is it <laughs> i was saying i can't believe that paul merson would come out and say that Torreira wouldn't get into any of the 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 top four teams Torreira has been brilliant this season Torreira, possibly the signing of the season so far. I think even other fans, so far. other fans are saying that. He's... Even the other day we went to Man United, when I come outside and I was talking to a few United fans, they were all going on about Torreira. They're like, bloody hell, that Torreira guy, he's a proper player. They were bigging up Guendouzi as well. Mm. Right, so, but we're just not getting, in a way it's good, because it keeps us under the radar still. Yeah. But I just feel that Unai Emery is not getting mm. any... Pre I don't think a lot of those guys in the press really rate him. You watch. That's just my opinion. You watch. Just from looking at it, it just seems to me that they're not... It was a bit like when Leicester won the league, you know what I mean? And everyone's like, yeah, all right, yeah, okay, you yeah. Know, you know what it I think is. As soon as they come up again... I'm not saying we're going to win the league, by the way, but it reminds me of that in that they never gave Leicester any mm. credit, even when... I still feel even when Leicester won it, they didn't get the credit mm. because people are like, yeah, that's only because all the other teams were crap. No, I think Leicester, you got, I remember they kept winning at every, the pressure was on them. When people kept saying, yeah, they're going to fold now. Yeah, next week they're going to, they went to mm. Man City. I remember that game and they, and they won there. So, you know, you know what it is? Give Emery you, the credit. He's I, doing I think, a fantastic job. I think a lot job. of the media have had their noses put out of joint. I don't think that they get the luxuries that they used to get at Colney, they don't get <laughs> they don't get the info. Have you noticed now? It's a lot of the um, foreign media outlets that break the transfer news. It you think that, that's? A... I'm telling you, it uh... is very clear. Remember what one of one of the best things that Ivan Gazidis done before he <coughs> left? What did he say about um, you know that that phrase that he mm. he coined about you know those who know don't speak. And those who speak don't know. Mm. And at the end of the day, all these media people were coming, you know, the usual faces were coming out uh, with the same old rubbish, John Cross, Smithers, just waffling a load of rubbish. And all of it was wrong. And then the likes of Guillaume Balaguer, for example, who notoriously has got a hell of a lot wrong involving Arsenal. And all of a sudden, over the last year, since coincidentally, the Spanish guy came in the club, Sinelli, Balaguer is getting things right. He called yeah, a Bamiyan. He said a lot of people get things wrong as well. Journal no, no, journalist wise. I, I, so. I genuinely believe that the media has just had their noses put out of joint. John Cross ain't going to get a book out of Emery. And <laughs> at the end of the what day, what you got against John Cross, oh, man? I can't stand the guy. The guy's a melt. It's just like he's the whole not. Of, he's he not. Is. I've told you this before. The guy's all right, man. No, he's all right. He's an no. Arsenal fan. No, he is. Behave yourself. He's an Arsenal. It's like, it's like Adrian Durham as well. Can't he's an Arsenal fan. Can't stand it. No, he ain't an John Arsenal Cross fan. Does he pay to Arsenal go to the games? Don't, you don't have to pay to go nah, to the games. man, he sits there in his little booth. He's a journalist, that's why. He he's nah, a journalist. No, nah, nah, that guy there. Got he's a nose, journalist. That guy got his nose put out of joint. If Arsenal turned around to you tomorrow and said you can get into every game free, what are you going to pay? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. the thing is with him, He's yeah? a journalist. Listen, Hold me, on, listen. Me, no, 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 right? Stop. He's a no, journalist. Li listen, right? What I'll say, yeah, is that every single one of them, they're all the same. They're all the same. John same, Cross, with, same with Adrian Durham and that as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you, you, you see, this is the thing, right? You let people like Adrian Durham wind you up, right? He's a prick. Oh, there glad you go. So he's winded you up. He's oh, wound glad you up. Said. He's wound you up. He's wound me up for about a last he's year a, and a he's half. A, he's a he's a radio he's a radio um, presenter who he he does. I have to say, right? He's a proper wind up when, it, especially when it comes to Arsenal. You can tell he goes he, on talk he, sport. He, he, he no, hold on. I've met obviously I've met Durham many a time, right? But you've got to judge these guys for what they are. He winds Arsenal fans up, right? He just just in his nature to do it, right? But you know, he gets very good ratings for his show by doing it, right? So you fall into the trap of being wound up by him. What you should do if you don't like what he's saying and you don't like, you don't watch or you don't listen. We don't. Bit like with us on, listen, there's people who don't like what we do on yeah. Arsenal Fan TV. Really? They do, yeah. I thought everyone loved us. <laughs> and the Are you same, all right? 
I've got this terrible cough. But the last terrible, half hour, what I've seen is you coughing away, man. I've if you start cough, giving man. me your germs, man. I've got a terrible cough. But as I was just getting back to that, as I say to them, you haven't got a watch. You ain't got a watch AFTV. I so don't it's the watch same thing, and I don't it's listen to It's the same to thing. With I'm just saying. So don't let him wind you up. I don't. We started but a, it is actually, we, we started he, um, a hashtag block. Um, Adrian Durham talk sport campaign oh, well, a year ago. Show rubbish, all these and a John Cross block. one. Yeah, why? Because we don't want to see their shit. John Cross, I've met him many times. Right, he's an Arsenal fan. He's an Arsenal supporter. I'm telling you, I've sat down. I've had many conversations with that guy. Right, I remember he was over in Russia. We were talking about Arsenal, the transfers. He was talking to me about what he thinks need to be done. I then saw him again um, at the airport. We we're talking Arsenal all the time. He loves Arsenal Football Club. But you even bought listen, him on our podcast. Listen, let me just say to you, right? He's a journalist. No. He's a journalist, right? And he's got journal he's got to do his job. Right? And sometimes that means criticizing Arsenal. Yeah, but do his job. No, 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 no. Because a lot it's of the stuff his that he's opinion. Come out with, like no. you have you I keep telling no, you this. No, 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 it's when not you that. have your opinion, no. when you have your opinion, no, you, right, no. you want to say whatever you say and nobody criticizes you. Oh mate, it don't work it's like nothing that. like that. He John Cross All on countless times. John time, Cross, John Cross <laughs> get him t- as soon as he gets angry, he starts turning yards. No, but that's blood club, No, no, mate. but why <laughs> I, I don't understand this block John Cross listen, thing. What's listen, foolishness, man. Because you say to me, if you don't like someone, block him. And as soon as I do, you yeah, start no, like, you, you block him, but you ain't got to launch a you ain't got to launch a campaign to block him, have you? Listen, you man. block him. I you never got? launched a campaign. I said there was a campaign launched. Do you know what I mean? Don't choke on your water. Foolishness. And um, block John Cross. Nice talk, by the way. It's all right. Thank you, AFTV. <laughs> Block, block John Cross. Listen, and the thing is, Stupid, the amount man. of stuff that he's come out with is bullshit. When he started making lies opinion. up about Meza Ozil. I says, how do you know it's lies? What do you mean, how do you know it's lies? He put a report out saying that Meza Ozil's on his way to Manchester United. Arsenal have washed their hands with him. A week later, he signed a new contract. Fool. Don't want he to got talk it about wrong. Him anyway. He got it wrong. He got it wrong. I don't want to talk like, about You've him. got things wrong before. I've never got anything wrong. You started off the show today talking about how... Oh, uh, I made a mistake. I mean, so it's all right for you to make a mistake, but he got that wrong now. Yeah, you I'm allowed. Block John Cross. I'm allowed. No, you're not allowed. I am. You know what I mean? What are you, my dad? Huh? No, but you can't be a hypocrite. Who get out of it, man? You can't be a hypocrite. Are Block John wrong? Cross. Are you never Of course wrong? I'm wrong. Oh, yeah. Lots of times. I, actually, Lots actually, of times actually, I'm wrong. I wanna, have you seen the video Lots floating of times around I'm today wrong. about you? What's that one now? Have you seen the video? No, I, I was creasing up. I, I don't. What, no, what? no, no, no. You've done an interview. Um, after Cardiff this season, Cardiff away. And you know you do your segment where you go around and ask all the fans. <coughs> Cardiff fans? No. no What's uh, that for? Like, you Channel know, 4? Like, no, no, no. For AFTV, after the game, you always do specific interviews with mm. an individual person. Then at the end mm-hmm. of it all, you get a group of people together because you can't interview every oh, yeah, single yeah. one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Round up, round up. Yeah, round up, yeah. Thing, yeah. One guy was on there talking to you. And he said, we are going to go and win our next 20. We are going to go on an, uh, an unbeaten run and we're going to not lose in our next 22 games. Did he? Yeah. I, serious. I, serious. I even seen that. We just need to avoid defeat against Southampton. It's 22 games. And what did I say to him? And you went, bloody hell. Um, I think you need to like steady on and not go over the What's top. What's wrong with saying no, that? No, I know that, but I'm saying, but it's... And this is I, the thing. Then how re- funny is that, though? I know, I know. Because well, even I retweeted and I said, could um, someone find this guy and tell me what the lottery numbers are this weekend? Well, big that guy up, man. Big you know that I mean? guy up. Yeah, I mean, I would like we to need, hear we from need to, We need to find him. We've got to find that guy. And get him in, like, to have an interview yeah. after one of the games and say, right, what's your prediction <laughs> for the next couple of months? If he says we're going to win the league, then... You know? Then we might have to take him to... <laughs> Seriously, and you can't shoot him down. But no, you. Ah, uh, oh, you know what? Ah, oh, here we go. He's fat. He's remembered oh, oh, something. He oh, wants right. to have a me about something. No, you know no, it. no. He's remembered. Here Let we go. Let me ask you this now, right? <laughs> Let me ask you this. We're going into a very busy Christmas period, right? Okay. Southampton. Spurs. Take the Spurs out of it a minute. That's, that's I'm talking about Premier League. Southampton, mm. Burnley. Who's after that? Liverpool. Brighton. Brighton. Boxing Day. What if we won all four of them games? Would you then start then to believe that we... Hold on. Would you start to believe that we can win the league? No. Why? Because Man City and Liverpool are still flying up. Beat top. Liverpool. We beat Liverpool. Yeah. And we won all those games. But what would and we... we came out of... What would we be why on, then... What would we be on Liverpool? Eight? 
eight behind. But why then would we not be able to mount a challenge? Why not? But I still won't be getting carried away. The only way that I will believe we're going to win the league is when we're lifting the trophy. It's the only time. Too many false dawns. Been there, seen it, done it. And plus, I know if how Arsenal, hard it is. If Arsenal won those games, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to win all those games. We know Christmas yeah. period, very difficult. And Liverpool away, we've been dreadful over the years. But yeah. if we won those, would the tra should then the transfer policies, or us as fans saying we're not going to get carried away, but as the board members of that, should their transfer policy be in January then to say, yeah, we need to push on. We could win this. Yeah. We need to go out and get Usman Dembele and get it and spend money to try and drive yeah. us on. Yeah, you do. You do. Because we're still very, very about, isn't it? How much of an incentive would it be? Do you remember about a month or so ago in one of my interviews, I said this same thing to you and you gave me that look like... Does our mentality then have to change if we used to win those games from no, top four because our mentality at the moment in, amongst the fans and probably amongst the management team is we must get in no, the top four. I think we should stay with the same mindset because it's working. I think it's still too early. Um, I think the league is so <coughs> precarious right now that a draw feels like a defeat. Mm. You know, there were times where you could get away with dropping two points. Like going to Old Trafford in recent times... Getting a point would have been like, yeah, that's a point. Mm. But no, I would have been in the grand scheme of things. We dropped two points that day, yeah. So, you know, this is how tight things are between the top five basically Liverpool and Manchester City are the two that are just stretching away at the moment. At the moment, at the but moment, then you've got you know, because the best way of summing it up was last Saturday, there were three teams that were all going into third place at all different times. We jumped into third after beating Huddersfield. Chelsea then jumped into third by beating Man City. Then Tottenham jumped into third by beating Leicester. So within the space of four hours, there was three different teams in third place. That's mm. how tight it is. That's the fine margins. A defeat is just catastrophic. Can we, beat, can we beat Southampton this weekend? Yes, we can. Yeah. With our mindset and everything, I think we need to look at it as they have got a new manager. And yes, you will have that sense of, you know, but they've already played a game under him. Mm. Um, so we're not going to be the first one, which is mm. a bonus because that's normally I, I, I'm the hardest. Looking at, I'm looking at Southampton and the games that I've seen them play this season, where they're very poor is at the back. Oh, they are very bad. dodgy at the back. Decent coming forward. Charlie Austin's good player. Redmond's Gabbiadini. Although Redmond they, they, hasn't scored in about forty odd games or yeah, something ridiculous. Um, or something. That was a, um, the midfield guy, um, Mina. Mm. Well, not Mina. Oh, I've got his name now. The French. He's a very good player. Hoiberg is it in midfield? They, they, midfield. They've got some good players. Midfield up front, good team. But we should defensively have way more. Very poor. I think we should start with Lacazette and Aubameyang, mm. and we got to go for the we got to go for goals yeah. in this game. Yeah, we got because especially the, the fact that our defense is a bit. They've had a week we off. could ship a goal They've in had that a week game. Off. They've had a yeah. week off. And and do you know what? Uh, We've got to go for it. We've uh, got to go for it. That's my attitude in this game. I said it in my own player ratings on on my channel with the Carabag game, and I said I was stunned to see. Lacazette starting against Carabag. I was like, what on earth is he starting for? It's a mindset. Then I thought different. about it. Then different I thought, mindset. no, but I thought about it. And I went, <coughs> you know what? I know what Emery's game is. I Get know him scoring. exactly what his Score game goals. is. Remember Abamyang on for a hat trick last season? Now, here you go, Laka. You need a goal right now. Take the ball. What did Laka do for the period straight after that? He was. He's had his goal wrongfully taken away at Old Trafford. It was his goal. Mm. He had a goal wrongfully dismissed for offside against Huddersfield. Nothing wrong with it. So it was the perfect time to say, put the ball in the net. Mm. Just give yourself a And not boost. only that, I just think that uh, what I like, and I was saying after that game as well, I like the attitude of this manager that, you know what, play. Mm. Why, why should you have a, um, all these nights off and stuff like that? Under the old mm. regime... Lots of players always got time off for games all the time. Now, I was looking at the games the other night and Messi came on against Spurs. He didn't have to. 
they've topped the group. Messi didn't need to play. Well, Messi should be could be at home with his feet up. But Messi wants to play. Messi wants to score goals, even though he's like 15, 20 minutes. Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, Juventus are top of the group. He still played against young boys. Dybala came off the bench. You know what I mean? I, I just think that the real top teams, the players want to play. I mean, if you, mm. you, you want to keep that goal-scoring record going. You want to play. I'm not saying, obviously, it would have been stupid to have risked guys like too many guys because it's such an important game of the weekend. But I like the fact that it's not this... Rest, rest, rest. It starts to get into your head. Yeah, I know. That exactly. players then start to think, oh, I shouldn't even be playing in that game. Mm. It's Carabag. I shouldn't. For me, as a footballer, back in the day, remember, you just played. So you keep that momentum going and you yeah. go out there and you play. And I, I, ju I just think that after the week we had three games in six days, it was the perfect time to rest players mm. because it was an intense six days. <coughs> um, the Huddersfield game was mm. a grind, a proper grind. Manchester United grind. That was a grind because they turned Carabag up. grind. Um, Tottenham. That was just mm. intense mentally and physically. Do you play a strong team against Tottenham yep. next week? Do you play a first team against yep. Tottenham? Considering you got Burnley at the weekend and it's an early kickoff. Yeah. And they will have no game. They'll we're, have a free. We're at home. Full team. We're at home. You go full. You sure? Yep. I don't know, you know. I don't think there's going to be any Arsenal fan or even Spurs fan that are going to accept a weakened side and let the other have an advantage. If we go where with a full side and Spurs go, nah, we're going to rest a load of players because we've got more important things in the league or whatever. Like Wenger did that time when we went to, to Tottenham. We played always the kids who got thrashed. Yeah, but, you know, not only could that unhinge the season... <laughs> mm you know, put something, you know, doubts in your mind or whatnot. But the fans ain't going to be happy about it. It's the strongest it's, team. Yeah, strong team. I, do you know what? The only exception I will make with that is that there are a few places where you can get away with some changes. Like, I, with all respect, due respect to them, it's not a game where the kids can play. It's too big a game, too intense. I don't know whether they're ready play for Play Leno or Czech in that game? Czech will probably play, mm. in my opinion, because it's very clear. He's got the experience, so I've got no, you mm. know, issues with that. Um, and you go Lacazette, Aubameyang, all the big yeah. Torreira, or you'd have all those out. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only other changes that may, might be in there, Ramsey might be in with a shout. Mm. Guendouzi, be in with a shout. Maybe Licksteiner. Mm. You know, if he wants to rest Bellerin, maybe. Maybe Monreal starts on the left hand side instead of Kalazinak, and we go to a four. But you go big. In but I go proper. Okay. And I think okay. Spurs will do the same. I'd like to hear from I'd like to hear from everybody um, listening to the show and anybody who's watching this on YouTube as well. It, you can leave it in the comments. Do we go with the strongest possible team against um, Spurs? Considering that on the Saturday, a couple of days after Saturday morning, as a matter of fact, isn't it? Early kickoff. We got Burnley. But we're at home. We're at home, but we got Burnley. Mm. Yeah. Just before we go. Um, I wanted to just ask you about this whole racism thing. I mean, mm. yet again, Chelsea um, yeah. in the news again yeah. for racism. Um, um, I touched now, on it this morning. Yeah, and and uh, uh, they had the incident. Like, Chelsea actually got a bit of form now for this racism <laughs> stuff. You know what I mean? The, the guys with this rhyme Sterling, the guys on the, on the train. And a in lot Paris. of times when you look at the age group of those fans, it always seems to be that age group that were back in the day used to do that sort of stuff and they've got to get them out of the game. But yeah, The ones that watch Alf Garnet. <laughs> but the Y word, mm. right, which is what the Chelsea fans who uh, were, is it Vidi or who they were playing, they were singing, right, yeah. which led to like a disgust of a lot of people. We, you know, even though I'm saying Chelsea have got form, we got form for it as well, yeah. Arsenal. The Arsenal fans will say it and sing it on a regular basis. I don't think is you don't uh, you don't hear it as much now. <coughs> you know what do you hey what do you think of Tottenham song? When you get to the end of that, lots of people don't sing that yeah, last bit. Yeah, it used to be. Yeah, <coughs> um, I know what you mean. Um, <coughs> while you co me. while you cough your guts up. Yep. Um, it's obviously Spurs use it um, because it's it's like their badge. In many respects, it's like we were saying off camera, it's like, you know, the um, it's such a touchy subject and it's 
Spurs, there's people that don't agree that they should be allowed to say it, mm. even though that they're using it in a. But a they way. all say it because you know yeah, what? Funny enough, my because it's a, it, it, yeah. it's a flip on the people that are using it in a mm. derogatory way. It's like the N word, and we were saying mm. for however many years, and you know, from times gone by, the N word was used to insult and discriminate against black people. And then black people started using the phrase, mm. and now it's a <coughs> it's a common part of life. I know I know black friends that don't like it. They don't because you see some greeting their friends by saying mm. that word, and I have friends that are like, I, I don't agree with it. Mm. But it's been flipped round to yeah. say, well, you can call us that as much as you want, but it ain't gonna bother us because you know. But no, hold on, no, it's been flipped round in the. So with black people, you could call another black person that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not and some don't like it, but the majority would be like, if you call a black person oh, yeah, that, yeah, then yeah. they take it. It's the same with the Y word. In that, Tottenham fans amongst themselves will call themselves that. Um, a mate of mine tonight, when we were talking about the game next week, he was using that word as you never turn over the Ys. Right now. I, do, I personally, though, wouldn't use that back at him. Mm. And I think the thing is about it is what I keep saying on this subject is that it's the context of how the word is used. When people, because I hear a lot of people at Arsenal say, well, they use it all the time. So why can't we use it? It's ridiculous. I think anytime you use a word, the context of it. So they're doing it as a, you know, we're all in it together. We're all, like you said, they flipped it back and they use it as a term to endearment of all their mates. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas when an Arsenal fan or a Chelsea fan's using it, we're using it to insult. Mm. And from you using that to insult, you know what you're doing with that word. Mm. You're not singing it like how they sing, you know, their songs and all that. I'm not to say it. As I'm well, trying right? not to say it, it's yeah, difficult. because I don't, you know. But oh, no. they're not using it how we're using it. I know, well, yeah. actually, well, I don't use that word, but how people I hear using it, they ain't using it to be friendly with it. No. And I think that that's where you should not yeah. be using that word. No. You're yeah. hearing it less and less at Arsenal. I know, you do hear it. But I less. personally would like to see Arsenal fans stop. We can't, we're guilty as well. Mm. Right? It's not just Chelsea fans. Mm -hmm. We're guilty as well of using that word. And West Ham fans, I use it a lot. It's got to stop. Mm. And it's ridiculous as well. All this thing about, yeah, because they were the Jewish club. There's more Jewish people on the board at Arsenal than there is at Tottenham. I don't know if you know that. And Chelsea's owner's Jewish. And Chelsea's owner is Jewish. Where did these... I don't understand it. It's Raheem, like, it's like, it's the, like the, the one with Raheem it's Sterling like the, the other Chelsea day. Fan. They, that was insulting Raheem Sterling and calling him X, Y, Z. And then he's jumping up for Kante. Yeah, you're jumping up for Kante. When Kante scored, yeah. And he's probably singing Kante's name. Then he's insulting Sterling. And then you've got guys, Chelsea fans, Y word. And yeah. Roman Abramovich is Jewish. It's absolutely, this is the stupid mentality of mm. all of this. Where, I know. Listen. It's not going to stop overnight. No. And I think, you know, I think what we always have to say is that it's improved a lot. It's improved a hell but of a still lot. still From when I used to go to football it's back in the day. It's still... You know, I used to go to football and people were there going like that. Nazi salutes. Regular, regular. People were pointing at you. So you're you doing monkey signs at me. I, that happened to me loads of times at football. That was a regular thing. I, I don't think there was a game hardly I'd go to, especially away from home. I didn't see that. And I remember John Barnes right. getting bananas thrown at him. Players get. Do you know what? Players got it bad, but fans, Jesus mm. Christ, we was on the front line. So, you know, it, and from those days to where it is now, <laughs> I'd say, you know, we got to congratulate fans and say we have taken a massive step of improvement. You know, but there's still that tiny little element there, little hardcore element that's always still with them. Always still trying to slip out these words and all that, and it's got to stop. And then the other thing is as well, I don't want to see you. I know you had, um, I saw that thing that you had during the week. This is another thing that has to stop. Uh -huh, uh -huh. People accusing people falsely uh -huh. of making racist slurs and things like that. Again, was... that, that is something I don't like as well. It was obvious what you said. You did not use the word monkey. 
right? It was obvious what you said. So people right trying to that. people trying to twist things up, and I've seen things like this before, and it really disgusts me when people do that. This is a serious subject. Yeah, this is a serious, serious subject. This is a serious thing that we have to stop. But when people then start trying to use that, no, nah, that no. don't do that, that you know. Is, but that that is the thing, and you know, some people I don't know whether foreign fans don't understand the English slang and terms that mm. we use, and they might not understand the word <coughs> uh, muggy, um, but you could clearly, no, you didn't, as anything, see mm. that I call Deli Ali a muggy prick, and I will call him a muggy prick <laughs> every day of the week. But on no uncertain terms did I call him what some, let's remember, it was a very, 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 very small minority. Yeah. But it, was, but it was more mm. than one too many. Yeah. But and it, uh, it was upsetting. Yeah. It was, but it the was main thing nice. is, right, we need to stop the, you know, all this racial abuse a game now in 2018 needs to stop. Yeah. Using the Y word is something from the dark age. That needs to stop. Even like we're going to Brighton in a few weeks' time. I remember being there. Last season and people's, you know, singing know. things like "Does your boyfriend know, know you here?" Yeah. and all, yeah. all these I, I things know. need to stop, man. I this know, is I know, I know. rubbish, man. You know, what I mean, this is 2018. There's a diverse people who watch, um, amount of people that watch football and love football mm. around the world. Football is the one thing that brings everyone together. Mm. You know, we well, got a divided, we got a divided country as it is with all this Brexit stuff and things like that. You know. Let's not divide ourselves on Brexit football. Brexit means Brexit. Brexit means, does it? <laughs> <laughs> does it? I don't know. Do you know what? Ever I don't since, know what it means. You know what? You were saying that, right? And I've just caught it out of the corner of my eye. Ever since I've done a podcast with you and had a cup of tea out of that mug over there with a the union jack on it. That's my many, cup. Yeah. Do you know how many times that got used as a picture with me holding it? Was with it? the title, Brexit means Brexit. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Did it you was, vote for Brexit? Actually, was, no, we're not yeah. going to get, get into that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, God. Could you imagine? What a, what a mess, God, what a mess this country is in, eh? I, listen, I've got people uh, using things against me for... I'll get you a Jamaican mates, cup. Don't worry, man. Yeah, man. Give me that. But you then you'd be mean? accused of being a fake yardie. Yeah, a Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> fake Buju. Oh, <laughs> Listen, um, thanks for watching the show today and listening to the show today. Um, don't forget it's available on uh, all your usual platforms. Yeah. So download it right now. Uh, don't forget the new uh, edition of Blood Brothers is coming out. What episode DT two. episode two? I don't know what DT gets up to in that one, but we'll we'll be able to find out. Um, <laughs> but it's brilliant, so make sure you you check that out. And don't forget to subscribe here to AFTV. We're doing our campaign at the moment, Road to One Million Subscribers. We want to get to one million. That'd be mad, wouldn't it? That'd be mad from where we've come from, from turning up at grounds and people telling us to f off. Crazy. Who are you lot? They still do that now. I know, I know. <laughs> There's no difference. You still get the same. I want to get one of them to subscribe. Do you know what I mean? Right? But listen, Road to one million, man. Yeah, man. Back us on that. If you don't subscribe already, subscribe. Press that subscribe button and subscribe right now. We will be back next week here. D2 will be back. I myself will be back. And uh, hopefully we'll be talking about two things. A victory in Southampton and a victory again over Spurs. Yeah, man, that'd be lovely. <laughs>